good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are joining us from. My name is Mariam. I am the sales coordinator for Middle East and Africa at, at Fluke Reliability, and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. We are allowing a couple of minutes for everyone to join, and we will get started shortly. We have a special webinar today. Our speaker is Omar Kinfawi. Omar is the Middle East and Africa Sales Manager at Fluke Reliability, and he is going to explain about the importance of vibration analysis and precision shaft alignment in enhancing your plant reliability performance. We'll wait a couple of minutes. I can see that we have got quite a few people logged in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. As mentioned, our speaker for today is Omar Kinfawi. Omar has a master's degree in mechanical engineering, and he is certified ISO CAT3. Vibration and infrared thermographer analyst specializing in rotating equipment. Omar is passionate about defining solutions and root cause analysis procedures for large and critical machinery. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items to go over. First, we will hear from our speaker and then we will go into our Q&A session and we will answer as many questions as we can. So feel free to type your question at any time as you think of them using the question feature available in your GoToWebinar panel. The chat feature is available but should only be used for general commands or for technical assistance. If you lose audio or visuals, simply exit GoToWebinar and come back to reset your connection. All right, you are here for how to enhance your plant reliability performance thanks to vibration analysis and precision shaft alignment. Our speaker is Omar Kinfawi. Omar, thank you so much for being here and I will hand over to you now. Okay, great. Thank you, thank you, Maria, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining this uh, this webinar. Okay, so it's good opportunity to to share with you some uh, uh, technologies and also some uh, uh, knowledge related to vibration and uh, laser alignment. Uh, so, as you may know, in vibration there are so many topics, and uh, talking about vibration during only one hour is not is not enough but we will uh, we will plan series of webinar where we will uh, each time uh, discuss about a subject and also uh, after your feedback we can also develop some new topics okay uh, so today we are mainly discussing how each of us would like to enhance uh, the plant reliability the rotating machinery reliability uh, this can go through uh, condition monitoring to uh, asset management, uh, but uh, today we are going to focus on uh, vibration uh, measurements and laser shaft alignment, precision laser shaft alignment, and uh, define a topic okay, that is very important and sometimes uh, it's not taken care of it, uh, that is related to vibration acceptance tests whenever an uh, end user or a plant is buying a new machine or having a large project of installing large pump or large uh, turbo machine, uh, it's very important to do a good vibration acceptance test to validate or either to reject uh, the machine. Uh, same for precision laser shaft alignment. When it comes to uh, very critical machines, tolerances are very important. Okay, so I hope you will enjoy this, uh, this webinar and feel free to ask a question in the chat and I would be happy to answer to your question. Okay, 
uh, a brief statement related to confidentiality okay and video recording uh, we are going to record this video and you will have access uh, to the to this video if you want to see again uh, what has been discussed uh, but the content is purely confidential okay uh, so let me introduce to you the, the content of today. Okay, I'm going to start first of uh, introducing our company, Fluke Reliability, okay, which is part of larger company we'll discuss. Uh, I will also introduce uh, different condition monitoring techniques okay, that are used in the industry related to some ISO standards. And then uh, we are going to start uh, with two parts. Okay, um, I was thinking at the beginning doing a webinar of two hours, uh, dedicated to acceptance tests and also to laser alignment, uh, but I feel that we we need to go deeper into that. And uh, today we are going to focus only on the vibration uh, acceptance tests, okay? And we are going to plan uh, in a few weeks uh, a second webinar related to laser alignment, okay? Uh, but feel free to ask any question. So the part one, we will uh, we will make uh, a brief introduction to what is vibration uh, uh, analysis, why we are performing uh, vibration analysis, uh, what are the different characteristics and units that are used, and different, different level of uh, measurement. We talk about overall measurement, diagnosis measurement, we are going to introduce what is a spectrum and so on. So this is a brief introduction to, to give, uh, let's say, a basic knowledge uh, to people that are not used to vibration uh, analysis. Uh, I know that I would like to to reach maximum of people uh, to be to be interested and uh, step by step in the future webinar we will uh, we will go deeper in, into vibration analysis. Uh, yeah, as a seg uh, as a second part in in part one we will go to the main topic, which is the acceptance test. Uh, what are the general conditions? What are the guidelines? The ISO standards that are used to define the acceptance test. Uh, we are going to, to discuss also the measurement parameters, uh, whenever like uh, the location, when you take your measurements, uh, what kind of sensors you should use, uh, what kind of configuration or measurement task, like the filters, the averaging and so on you can use uh, to compare between what have been discussed in the contract with the, between the OEM and the end user. Uh, and, uh, and that's it. And then uh, we are going to also to introduce the main vibration check. Um, I was using on field uh, to uh, to do acceptance tests. One of them uh, is to make sure that the machine is balanced with the right quality. And uh, one more important that can cause very uh, critical uh, defect is the uh, resonance problem for variable speed machine. Uh, some tests that needs to be performed during the acceptance. And uh, for the next webinar, which is already ready, but uh, I prefer to focus uh, and go deeper into this one. Uh, we will work on precision uh, laser shaft alignment. Uh, what are the shaft alignment fundamentals? How we define uh, the good tolerances? Uh, how we can use target tolerances when the OEM define uh, target tolerances, maybe that are uh, expressed in dial gauge, how to convert from dial gauge to laser alignment. So all this, uh, all this uh, let's say, uh, uh, discussion will be, uh, uh, will be done during the next webinar okay uh, so let's let's go so for the introduction uh, okay so I would like to introduce to you uh, Fluke uh, okay so Fluke is, is very known company is uh, one of the leader or the leader of measurement systems worldwide uh, but Fluke is part of also of a larger family which is a uh, Fortif company uh, which is a, a conglomerate based in US, one of the S&P 500 companies. So thanks to, uh, to the fact that Fluke is being part of so large uh, company like Fortif, enable us to, to go deeper into our uh, product development, uh, our customer success and so on. Uh, so for Fluke Reliability uh, was created um, uh, four years ago after the acquisition of two main companies one company is called Emaint, so it's a CMMS uh, software, computer maintenance uh, software that helps uh, reliability engineers, that helps maintenance engineers, uh, managers uh, to manage their assets, to create the work orders, uh, to track every action, to assign people to do actions. So it's, uh, it's very useful uh, and uh, cloud-based software 
uh, dedicated really to maintenance. Okay, sometimes we can face uh, in very large companies using uh, very, uh, very famous uh, software like uh, maybe SAP uh, or Oracle, but sometimes it's difficult to, uh, to apply uh, this uh, huge software to the maintenance. So Emate can, uh, uh, can uh, let's say, be used with SAP, for instance, uh, to manage as, uh, your assets and make the work easier for you. Uh, Fluke Reliability, I said, was created four years ago, and uh, they acquired a very known company uh, called Proof Technique, which is a German company specialized in uh, laser uh, shaft alignment so, uh, and vibration analysis. Um, I am myself from Proof Technique. I work for more than 12 years in Proof Technique. Uh, now Fluke Reliability on all type of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, positions from uh, field engineer uh, to project management, to uh, to sales engineer, to now uh, regional manager for uh, Middle East and Africa uh, region. Uh, we are more than 800 employees worldwide. Okay, uh, in uh, and we have almost 24 offices in 20 countries. So we can, uh, whenever we have a global uh, account, global customer, we can help them uh, whenever, wherever, uh, whenever they are. Uh, also, uh, as a Fluke Reliability is the is the newest company from Fluke. Okay, uh, we often face uh, many customers asking us, uh, Fluke is uh, is so big and uh, we don't know how to talk with, and so on. Uh, so the first one we have is uh, is a Fluke Calibration. Okay, so Fluke Calibration is a, a operational company of uh, of Fluke. Okay, and it's uh, dedicated to calibration. Uh, measurement to calibrate to calibrate device. Whenever you have, a, let's say, a vibration device, you need to make sure every two years that it is measuring in the right range. Uh, so you need uh, to calibrate this device, and you need more uh, advanced tool, more precise tools that control your vibration analyzer and tells you, okay, you can measure your measurements are reliable. So fluke calibration is very advanced uh, company. Uh, then we have the, let's say, the most famous one is uh, the Fluke Industrial. Okay, so it's uh, we call it Fluke IG. Uh, Fluke IG is uh, is very known for the multimeters, for the thermal cameras, for the clamp meters. Uh, so uh, Fluke was the one who uh, who at the beginning, you know, I, I guess many of you maybe have already used in their school or maybe in their home the yellow multimeter from Fluke. Uh, we have another brand uh, which is Fluke Network. So this one is more for telecommunication and IT. Uh, we have uh, another Fluke which is Fluke Process Instrument. This one is close to Fluke IG, but this is for online and permanent installation. Fluke Industrial is more for handheld, uh, handheld devices, and Fluke Process Instruments can offer the same range of uh, products and measurements, but for permanent installation. Uh, and we have the, the new one I am part of it, which is Fluke Reliability, uh, combined between two companies, Emate, CMMS software, and uh, Proof Technique, Vibration, and Alignment. Uh, so we, we cover, uh, we are not only uh, providing product, but we are very known as a service company. We do troubleshooting, we give uh, training, uh, ISO certified training, uh, and uh, so we are part of uh, service and uh, product and software company. And the last one, uh, which is a little bit different from them, which is Fluke, uh, Fluke Biomedical, okay, that offer healthcare uh, solutions for healthcare industry. So I hope uh, with this slide, make it clear uh, who, what is Fluke and uh, which entity is doing it. Um, in uh, in Proof Technique, Fluke uh, Reliability, we have the chance to operate in a different type of industries. I would say whenever uh, there is uh, something rotating, uh, we are there. Uh, when it comes to power generation, uh, wind turbine, uh, hydro, oil and gas, uh, all these machines, they have generators, alternators, and uh, they have uh, steam turbines, gas turbines. So we are working there. We are performing either uh, vibration analysis, troubleshooting, uh, installing uh, online systems, protection systems. Uh, or doing uh, laser alignment and so on. Uh, we work also in, in other type of industries like uh, chemical, petrochemical, 
uh, mining, mining which is uh, mining and cement that are big, uh, big industries for us. And we are known there when it comes to uh, very, very large uh, machines uh, in the mining, uh, in mining side, like in gold side, in the uh, coal side, in the phosphate. Uh, we have a lot of experience there in steel industry and all type of these industries, also automotive, FNB, food and beverage, and pharma. Okay, uh, so let me, uh, I like to introduce this slide, okay, is uh, this slide is defining the condition monitoring techniques that will help to, to reach a better uh, reliability. Okay, uh, so in this slide, uh, let me, okay, in this slide, uh, we can uh, define, okay, the equipment health, okay, uh, depending on type of maintenance we are using. As you may know, uh, different plants can use uh, different type of maintenance. Can go from reactive or corrective maintenance to, predict, to preventive maintenance to uh, condition-based maintenance or predictive maintenance. Uh, what we aim all doing this condition monitoring techniques is to uh, increase our reliability. Uh, increase our re reliability means have having less uh, machine failures. Uh, so we are going to do our best to extend the lifetime of our machines, to make sure that our machines are operating in a good uh, condition and that we are not, uh, let's say, uh, we cannot have let's, uh, catastrophic failures, okay? Uh, so this curve starts from here on the top left, okay, where uh, we have uh, what we call uh, potential uh, failure. So your failure, imagine you have a bearing and you have a small pitting in your bearing. Okay, so this is the first step. Doesn't mean that the machine will collapse uh, or fail, but if we are not monitoring this small uh, beginning of failure, uh, we may uh, fail soon. So we have different condition monitoring techniques, okay, that uh, fluke reliability, ARC is covering uh, part of them and also maybe is aiming to uh, cover more and more to complete the reliability program. Uh, the first one we call it is oil analysis. So oil analysis is very known in the industry when it comes to very large gearboxes. Uh, for instance, you can take sample of uh, oil and look for the chemical uh, and maybe particle size dist uh, in uh, distribution in this oil and uh, understand if your viscosity is still in good uh, condition, if you have some water uh, there, if you have some corrosion that you can detect. Uh, so oil analysis is very important for critical machine and needs to be part of the reliability program. Um, we, def we define also the second one, which is ultrasonic measurement. Uh, ultrasonic measurement is close to vibration, I would say, because we are dealing about with the uh, sine wave uh, and so on. And ultrasonic detection uh, is very important when it comes to uh, looking for leaks. Uh, if you have uh, industry where you have where you are having gases, for instance, and you need to make sure that you are not having leaks for safety conditions, but also for performance conditions. So, uh, so we have in Fluke some ultrasonic tools, cameras that can look for every leak and uh, and also detect it uh, easily. Uh, we use also ultrasonic uh, measurements uh, to detect noise. If uh, there is a bearing, you have metal-metal uh, contact inside the bearing because you have lubrification, which is not good, uh, or, or something uh, like this. And then we come to vibration analysis, which is, uh, let's say, the most common one, and I would say the technique that aims to detect the main, uh, the main failures, the main uh, problems on the machine. Thanks to vibration, we uh, we can cover a wide a range of uh, frequencies that goes from uh, very low frequencies to detect uh, uh, problems of unbalance for low rotating machinery. And we can cover also uh, other type of defect like the bearing one, the cavitation, and so on. Uh, so vibration is very, is very useful. Uh, and I would say it's something uh, that every plant should, should use, it's mandatory. Uh, we have the last one, uh, not the last one, but we have the thermography also, which is cameras, and you can look, uh, for example, if you want to do to control electrical panels, 
to look uh, if you have some uh, problem of uh, junction or isolation. Uh, so it's very important to use thermal camera and it's very easy uh, to use it. There are some training uh, and certification for that, uh, but it's very useful and safety tool to use. Uh, we have the other one, which is the motor test, motor testing, uh, motor or motor current analysis. Uh, this one also is very used in the industry to uh, to analyze what happens exactly in the motor. Sometimes when it comes to having high vibration, uh, we have the electrical guys uh, discussing with the mechanical guys. Your vibration is coming from motor, your vibration is coming from the machine. Uh, so using motor testing helps to understand better what, uh, what happens inside uh, your machine. If you are not doing anything of that, uh, you will start having too much noise in your machine, uh, too much vibration, it will create uh, wear and you will start having a very high temperature on your bearing uh, until you, uh, you reach the functional failure or the catastrophic failure. Okay, so the aim is always to use these techniques here uh, and to perform a good installation since the beginning, okay, uh, to make sure that you are using the right acceptance test that we will afford uh, soon, uh, and then you operate in, in the best conditions, okay? So we always need to install, acquire data, uh, enrich data, compare the data between the vibration, the process, and so on to understand better your machine, and then take action as a team. Uh, take action with the, with the mechanical department, electrical department, to take an action all together to solve the problem and understand the root cause of your uh, failure. Okay, uh, so uh, I guess this introduction gives you a brief idea about fluke reliability, who we are and uh, what we are doing. Okay, so as I said, uh, we are going to discuss now the, the part one, okay, uh, which is, will be de dedicated mainly to vibration. Uh, and as I said, to uh, let's say to entertain maximum of people, I would like to introduce some basics, uh, knowledge related to vibration analysis. Okay. Uh, so the the first question I would ask: uh, Why we do performing? Why we are performing vibration analysis in the plant? Okay. Uh, so as I said here, uh, vibration has traditionally been associated with traveling machine. In machines. Whenever it vibrates, okay, it means that there is something happening inside the machine and we need to understand. Uh, and in more, uh, by the past, you can uh, you can have some experience of guys or having very good ear just using a screwdriver and listening to the vibration. Uh, but now uh, we are having more uh, advanced devices, let's say, and that can save many millions to the industry. You, you know, when there is a, an extensive failure uh, on a, another machine, imagine you have small pumps uh, that is managing the lubrication for a large gearbox, but this pump failed, you can have a very, uh, a very uh, let's say, catastrophic extensive failures. Uh, so vibration saves a lot of millions. Uh, we can uh, monitor easily the vibration using some very simple sensor to trend the vibration and put some threshold, uh, warning, alarm, pre-warning to understand and decide what action we could do. Okay, and uh, and then uh, with vibration we can trend. Okay, to know if we are if it's acceptable or not. But the most important is to understand why it is high. Because if you have a motor that is vibration too much, replacing it is not the solution. The solution is to understand why uh, why you have this problem. Okay. So here, uh, why we are performing uh, 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 vibration testing? Okay. One of them is to, to increase the plant reliability, uh, which is uh, the aim of, uh, of this, uh, all this series of webinars that are coming, uh, to avoid loss of production uh, due to catastrophic failure. Imagine you have, uh, you have let's say, two uh, very important machine that stops today uh, your process and you cannot produce anymore. You can, uh, you can uh, lose a lot of money out of that. Uh, reduce maintenance cost. Uh, if you implement vibration testing, okay, you will detect the failure at the beginning. So you can just adapt to some small, uh, let's say, modifications or corrections that won't cost that much. But if you wait until the vibration starts to reach some uh, unacceptable levels, uh, then the repairing cost can be very expensive. Uh, there is also the safety 
and security conditions uh, for the technicians and people working around the plants. If, uh, if, if machine is too much vibra uh, vibrating, maybe uh, some parts can, can fly over. Uh, I assisted to this experience when a uh, mass of 200 grams just fly over and you can kill someone. So for safety and uh, security conditions, it's very really improvement. And in general, we are looking to, to improve the, what we call the overall efficiency or effectiveness of our plants by having a better performance uh, having our mach machines running at the best operational conditions, not having to lower maybe the load because the machine is going to start uh, vibrating. So it's good to have a very good performance. Having availability of the machine, okay. Uh, so if uh, if we reach the 95%, for, for instance, of availability is very good. If we have less availability, then we can produce less. Then we are losing money. Uh, and the quality of the product. At the end, we are looking to produce something. Uh, so the quality of the product needs to be good. If we are not having good quality, we are going just to throw some products sometimes because they are not manufactured the right way. And this is lose of time and money. Okay. And while we also perform vibration analysis, it's sometimes uh, very important when it comes to buying a critical machine, very important machine to set some uh, some terms and condition in the contract okay to accept or not machines okay uh, between oem manufacturers and also end users and this will involve the warranty okay when the warranty will start when the warranty will end the liability if uh, if we have a problem who is going to pay for if i cannot produce who is going to take to pay for it and also the payment condition when we are going to release maybe 70% of the machine cost or maybe 80%, maybe we will retain 10%, 20% only after the warranty. So uh, vibration can help to detect if, if the conditions are good or bad. Okay, so what is the reliability? So uh, we define this, uh, this sentence, I like it. There are the probability that an asset will perform a required function without failure uh, under stated condition for a stated period of, of time. Okay, so we need to make sure that our machines are working when we need them. So this is what I already say in this, this sentence. Okay, uh, so this graph here shows uh, two things. So the high failure rate, okay, and the reliability, okay, rate. So you can see that when we have over the time, okay, a plant that has a reliability rate that is very low, Okay, we have a very high failure rate, which is normal. Less, less reliable, more problems. When, it, when we start reaching better reliability in our plants, okay, then we are having less and less failure. Okay, so this is what we are aiming to reach. And uh, all maintenance engineers, uh, reliability engineers can track this reliability thanks to key performance indicators, we call it KPI. Okay, so we need maybe to record the number, the number of failures, the total repair cost, how much it costs, average repair cost. Okay, uh, the uh, mean time between failure, how much the, this machine is uh, um, has a failure every year, every six months. Okay, so and mechanical availability. Okay. So all this, uh, all this KPI, many and uh, there are so many. Okay, depending on the plant, the, the industry. Uh, but it's very it's very important to min to monitor uh, your assets thanks to KPI. Okay, good. So uh, what is vibration analysis? Okay, and what is a vibration? Uh, a vibration is pulsating motion of a machine or machine part. Okay, uh, for instance, here we have a motor. We can have the vibration of motor, vibration of the shaft, vibration of the bearing, uh, vibration of the uh, surrounding vibration and so vibration is a response to some form of excitation okay so excitation we are giving power to motor okay so we are going to excitate motor to rotate at certain speed so motor if it has some failure it, it will start vibrating more so it's normal to always have a vibration okay but what define uh, if it's good or not we are going to discuss later so here uh, as a simple way we have uh, a mass and uh, uh, spring here uh, and uh, we have a vibration so we define uh, the amplitudes okay which is 
the difference between the steady position and the maximum or minimum and uh, also we define the period okay how long does it take to go from an initial position to another one okay so uh, when we perform a vibration uh, analysis we need to define some characteristics okay uh, the main ones are the amplitude okay amplitude means how much the value how severe it is so it's the amplitude who will tell you if it's acceptable or not the second one is the frequency the frequency told you uh, tells you uh, how often it happens okay what is the period you have your uh, you have your frequency uh, happening and this frequency can be after that correlated to uh, a part of your machine okay so if uh, we know that this part uh, has a specific kinematics so then we understand that this ampli these high amplitudes corresponds to this uh, machine part and we have the third one okay which is a little bit more advanced is the phase okay uh, what the phase means when when we are comparing two signals one to each other we need to understand uh, which of one happened first uh, so phase measurements is very useful when we perform uh, balancing we are going to discuss it and where we perform also model analysis or ODS. Uh, so here you can see uh, the motion of your uh, mass, okay? And we are going to plot over the time, okay? The variation of the amplitude, okay? So uh, it will reach a maximum, then a minimum, and this is what we call a period, okay? And uh, period is uh, in millisecond or second, and we define the amplitude here, either the peak to peak, okay, from the minus to the maximum, or the zero peak or the RMS, which is the root mean square uh, value, okay? So we defined it here, the characteristic of the vibration, and also we need to define uh, vibration units. Uh, vibration units are very important because depending on what you are looking for, what kind of defect, what kind of frequencies, what kind of uh, filters are you using okay you need to define the best units to analyze your vibration okay uh, the main the three units that we call is the the first one is the displacement okay so displacement it's a distance okay so it's described the distance traveled by the mass how far up and down it is moving okay so here we can define the 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 displacement, okay? Uh, displacements are very, very used to measure vibration on the shaft, okay? Because we have access to a specific sensor, we call it displacement sensor, and we can measure the vibration on the shaft and decide how much the shaft is moving, okay? And the shaft, if it's inside journal bearing or sleeve bearing, we need to make sure that the clearance uh, is not less than the shaft movement, okay? It's very important. So the total movement of the shaft is measuring uh, with peak-to-peak -peak value. Peak-to-peak -peak value means, okay, it is measuring from the minimum and maximum, okay? Uh, and then we introduce the most common one, uh, which is called the velocity, okay? Uh, the velocity, uh, it's measured by inch per second or millimeter per second, okay? And this is the one uh that we we feel this is the one we say i feel vibration so that's the best unit to use is the velocity okay so it describes how fast the mass is moving at any point or how quickly it is covering a distance so velocity is the rate of change of displacement so let's say for a car we say it's kilo, kilometer per hour okay a miles per hour um, but for uh, machinery, rotating machinery, we are talking about uh, millimeter per second and we are using what we call the root mean square or sometimes uh, peak, uh, peak value. Uh, the last one, okay, we are introducing is the acceleration value, okay. So acceleration is used more for high frequency detection to look for uh, bearing early uh, bearing stage uh, uh, failures to look for uh, cavitation to look maybe for gear mesh frequencies 
when it comes to having uh, repetitive impacts or shocks in the gearbox. Uh, so we, we mainly use um, acceleration. So acceleration, we have two main units, uh, depending uh, of people, some of them prefer to use G, okay, or meter per second square. Uh, G is just 9.81 uh, meter per second square. Uh, so depends uh, which uh, uh, which uh, which one you want to use. So acceleration is like the velocity, but acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Okay, so it describes how quickly the mass is speeding up or slowing down. Okay, are we accelerating or are we in deceleration? Uh, so with this value, we want to uh, to want the maximum impact force. Okay, so this is why I was talking about impacts, repetitive impacts, we are looking for shocks uh, in terms of uh, acceleration, okay? And uh, if you can see here, this uh, small animation, okay, it shows uh, the relation between the displacement, the velocity, and the acceleration. Uh, what you can see from, uh, from, this, uh, from this graph is that uh, the first one that reached the maximum, okay, is the uh, is the is the uh, the acceleration, and then uh, when you reach you accelerate the maximum, you will reach the maximum speed to reach then the maximum distance. So there is uh, what we call uh, one is lagging or in advance or lagging, okay, and there is a difference between the we call it uh, phase, okay. So phase it's a difference between signals. Uh, here is, a, let's say, a subjective uh, perception about uh, these units, okay? Because uh, now it's too much uh, theoretical, let's say, for some people that are not used, they are saying maybe it's uh, while going back to school. Uh, but here is a subjective uh, perception of uh, the units that we are using. Uh, if you use uh, displacement, okay, we say that displacements, okay, is what you can you can see, okay, what you are. Uh, your eye, let's say, has a filter and allows you to see it. Uh, so, and we define what we call the frequency range, it is measuring. So frequency, the unit is the Hertz. And uh, as you can see here, we are measuring, let's say around, uh, it can start from DC, from zero, let's say, up to 400 Hertz or 1000 Hertz. So this is uh, when we measure displacement, okay? So the unit here is micron or mils, okay? And we measure in displacement, uh, two things. Uh, we measure the displacement vibration, okay, the AC value, but we measure also the the gap, or we call it the S max, is the distance uh, is the distance between your sensor and your shaft. Uh, the second one is the uh, velocity, okay. So the velocity is, uh, as I said, this is what we can feel, okay, when you just put your hand uh, on top of a bearing and you feel it shaking. So this is when we are saying, oh, uh, we have too much vibration. Uh, so the, the filters are defined like this, okay? So this is what we call high pass filter and low pass uh, filter and combination is, uh, is a, band, uh, a band filter, okay? And we measure velocity uh, in millimeter per second, okay? Or inch per second. Uh, we measure the RMS value, okay? Or we can measure also the zero peak uh, value. So most of the standards, let's say, I would say, uh, or 60%, 70% of people are using the velocity to, uh, to check uh, first if a machine is good or not. But this is not enough. Um, the last one is the uh, acceleration. Uh, so acceleration, we are going higher in the frequencies, okay? We are going up to 20, 40, or 80 kilohertz uh, to measure, to measure what, what we cannot feel. Okay, what we can hear, where some something uh, a machine can have a lot of noise without vibrating, let's say, without feeling the vibration. If you if you come to a pump to a pump that has cavitation, you will hear a lot of noise. But if you put your hand, it will not shake, it will not vibrate, let's say. Uh, so vibration is is used uh, for that. Okay, uh, to detect the early stage uh, failure of uh, of your bearing, cavitation issues, and uh, all about impacts. This is mainly what where we use acceleration value. Uh, vi vibra uh, velocity is not enough because if you wait to uh, to reach the stage of the uh, bearing failure uh, and to see it in velocity, it's too late. 
you need to measure it maybe in acceleration to say, oh, okay, I have too, too much acceleration value. I need to put more grease on it. Okay. And uh, there are also some other high, high frequency uh, techniques. Okay. One of them is from, uh, we are using it in fluke reliability, which is called uh, shock pulse. Okay. So this one allows even to measure uh, very uh, precisely in high frequencies to detect bearing condition. If you have problems of lubrication or if you have problem of a damage of a pitting or a, a mark on already in your inner race or outer race or element bearings. Uh, so shock pulse is very useful. It is using um, resonance frequency of the sensor that allows to measure uh, the, the to, to measure and amplify uh, the, the vibration in high frequencies. So those are the vibration units, displacement, velocity, acceleration. Those are the main. Okay, so just to, to say again, we have three basic facts, okay, that all machines vibrate. Okay, whenever we have a source of excitation, it will create rotation on your machine, it will vibrate. Okay, so it's normal to vibrate. Uh, but as we said, it's the amplitude, it's the limits that will tell you if it's acceptable or not. Uh, when the machine vibrates, if there is a change in vibration, okay, if it's increasing, uh, it means that something's happened inside the machine. Okay, so we can, uh, we can trend either the amplitude, okay, the values, and compare to ISO standards if it's acceptable or not. Or we can also trend the variation if it's uh, if it has uh, maybe change about 10 percent, 50 percent, the value. It means that something happened. And uh, each machinery de defect generates vibration signals. Uh, here we have uh, on your left we have a vertical pump, okay. Uh, so we have the, your motor, you have your bearing. Uh, you have your coupling, you have other bearings, and then you have your vans uh, here in your pump, okay? So whenever you have problem in the bearing, maybe the first one on the top, bearing one or bearing two or bearing three, each of them ha will have different frequency. So uh, thanks to vibration, we can use like this kind of, uh, of graph, we call it spectrum, okay? So it's representation of vibration in, in hertz, in frequencies, and in amplitudes, okay? Or, and we can also do what we call trending. Uh, so here we are measuring, uh, for instance, uh, this is for a permanent installation. We are measuring V, the velocity I just introduced before, uh, over the time, okay? And we are placing some warnings and alarms uh, to see if, uh, if the, it's acceptable or not and decide uh, to do an action. What we should re uh, avoid is being in this region, okay? We should always, as soon as we reach, for instance, the warning, do something in the machine, some corrections, modifications to avoid being here, being here. Okay, because here the damage can be very uh, costly to to handle. Okay. Uh, so let me introduce to you the overall measurements uh, we call uh, level one. Okay, so the overall vibration is defined as the sum of vibration energy produced across a filtered bandwidth of sum of all vibration measured within specified frequency, uh, specified frequency range. What does it mean? It means that you will measure a only one value, okay? It will give you one, two, three, that will give you a sum of all vibration of all your components, all your parts. Each of them will generate uh, vibration and you will sum this vibration to give you only one value. So this is what we call the overall measurement. So the overall measurements provide an overall single value of measurement. Okay, it can be used to identify developing fault. This is what we saw just before in the graph, uh, which is increasing, or can it can be trended over the time. Okay, to to know the machine health. Uh, overall measurements uh, have their own limitation. Uh, the good point with overall measurements is that it's easy to implement, and it will give you a threshold. It will give you an alarm. Okay but it will not help you to understand which component has generated these high amplitudes, okay? So this is why we call that overall measurements have their own limitation and it is not possible to identify the fault, okay? 
Uh, so here are some uh, some uh, monitoring and assessments of systems without shutdown. Okay, so it helps to monitor, to do, let's say, non-destructive testing, I would say. And uh, thanks to some uh, overall uh, measurement vibration, so we can measure the velocity, as I said, the displacement uh, and the acceleration, okay, either for uh, machine vibration, like unbalance, disalignment, or for uh, bearing uh, evaluation, okay? We call it shock boost, okay? Or uh, we have other type of, of techniques like the peak view and so on. And at the end, the aim is to have uh, this kind of graph here that you can see uh, when you can trend the vibration and decide here, okay, so here, for instance, we are coming here, we have first warning. So we have done an action. So it goes again lower. Here again, we have another one. So we have done an action. It goes again, but here maybe it's too late. Okay, we may we might have used the maximum lifetime of our bearing or whatever. So it's uh, yeah, maybe we need to to replace here. Okay, and avoid reaching the 25 millimeter per second. Okay. Uh, so after introducing the diagnosis, uh, uh, the overall measurement, uh, now we need to understand why we have uh, high vibration values, uh, and we use the uh, diagnosis. So in the diagnosis, uh, in a machine, it starts to be uh, more complicated because we have different parts. Okay, uh, so the machine has a rotor that is spinning, pulleys, gears, bearing, blades. Okay, and my, many other sources of vibration. Okay, so it starts to be uh, difficult to understand which of them is uh, creating the vibration, generating the high amplitudes, okay? Uh, so the overall uh, measurement ha has its uh, its limits, okay? So this is why, uh, where we introduce the spectrum, okay? So the spectrum allows to separate the components, the components that overlap in the time waveform, okay? And display them separately in frequencies, okay? Uh, when we have this is what you can see here. So the gray one, the, the time signal, uh, we can see that you, you don't have only one sine wave or only one periodical signal. Okay, you have different periodical signals uh, added to each other and we need to separate them to understand which one is generating the high vibration. Okay, so for, for instance, this uh, gray uh, time wave, we split it in three time waves, the red one, the blue and the green, and each of them maybe is related to a different component. And after that, we move from a time domain, okay, to a frequency domain. And here we display in, in amplitude again, but now we are in frequency in Hertz. And we display like uh, these uh, bars, okay, or we call it harmonics, uh, that each of them, and then maybe here we can say, oh, it's the red one who is generating the highest amplitude values. Okay, so level two, okay, uh, it's, it allows to do interpre interpretation of vibration signals uh, to know where is the cause uh, of your high vibration, okay, and to monitor also specific damage. Uh, imagine uh, you have here, let me go back, you have this slide, okay, and this red, okay, bar here is related to, uh, to imbalance. Okay, and you want to monitor only this wear, only the imbalance, to know if your imbalance is good or enough. Okay, so uh, we can trend only this value, so we can do what we call uh, narrow bands. Okay, just to monitor that. Okay, so level two diagnosis, we use mainly uh, uh, spectrums, okay, or full spectrums for, uh, for some other type of machine. We use also broadband spectrum for acceleration that cover very wide uh, frequency. And we use another type called envelope spectrum. The envelope spectrum will help you if you input your bearing uh, reference, it will help you to, uh, it will tell you which part of your bearing has a failure, if it's the uh, element bearing or the inner race and so on. Uh, we can use also the time signal, time. Uh, time signal is very important when it comes to very low speed machines, okay, where the spectrum can have uh, its limitation when you have some uh, transient event, something that is random. Uh, so time signal is very good. And we can also do the shaft vibration, or we call it the orbital measurements. 
level two, and then I will say level two plus. Okay, uh, we have further di diagnostic methods. Uh, we call it BAM test. When you hit your machine, you excite your machine, and you collect the response and you use what we call the um, uh, the transfer function. Okay, to to understand. Uh, the, we do the run up and cost down. Okay, when you uh, variate the speed and you collect the vibration, and then you can understand what is the critical speed. We will see this. The phase measurement, we introduce the phase where I told you we are comparing two signals to know which of them is lagging, which of them is in advance. And uh, we can do also order spectrum to look for, uh, synchro uh, for synchronous and non synchronous uh, patterns and orbit measurements for uh, CBX. Okay. So this is why we implement different strategy okay, uh, to diagnose. So the first one, we call it the level one. Uh, uh, so this is where I introduce the overall value. The second one is the level two. Okay, so this is where I, I introduce the spectrums, uh, the time wave, and so on. And now, uh, with the with the future, what is coming? I don't know if you have seen ChatGPT, for instance. Uh, we are uh, we are now working with uh, with machines, with the machine learning, with the artificial intelligence. So uh, vibration. Uh, analysis is taking the next step. Uh, not yet, uh, I would say. Uh, we have many softwares uh, existing, but I would say the performance is not yet 100% uh, reached. But it helps already to, let's say, to, to simplify the diagnosis. Uh, but the future is to uh, to forecast and also to have automated diagnosis uh, ready and uh, reliable automated diagnosis. I would say. Okay, so uh, I hope this uh, brief introduction to vibration analysis. Okay, uh, normally we do it in uh, th three weeks. Now I have done it in 20 minutes. Uh, helps you to understand more about it. Now let's come to the main topic, which is the vibration acceptance test. Okay, uh, so here we will define what is a vibration acceptance test. In this uh, curve, we call it the bathtub curve. Okay, it defines the cycle of uh, your system breakdown, let's say. Uh, and you see uh, it has the shape of a bathtub, okay, like this. Uh, and here in the y uh, axis, you have the risks, okay, of failure and over the time, okay. What you can see is that at position one, uh, this is where a new machine is installed or overhauled machine, okay, or repair is installed. You see that we have here a high risk, okay, that this machine will fail, okay. So this is why we need to make sure we are doing the right acceptance tests uh, to pass over this area. This is what we call the running period, okay, and this is where we define the accepted test. And if the acceptance tests are uh, validated, are good, we are operating in normal condition, and it is normal that after a few, uh, not few, many hours or years, we start having some, uh, some, somewhere, okay, that will increase uh, the risk of the failure, okay, until the breakdown, with what we should avoid, okay. So we define a different uh, area or zones. The one is the early failure, okay, which is needs to be. Uh, uh, this is where we need to perform a right acceptance test. Okay, maybe uh, it can be related to problem in the material or something inaccurate in manufacturing or assembly error of the components. Maybe you are not using uh, the right clearance and so on. Uh, then we have the normal operation condition, okay, where maybe we are going to implement condition based maintenance, also not only preventive maintenance. Uh, but sometimes here, okay, this is not 100% uh, reliable because we can have something that happens uh, randomly, transient something in the machine that can cause failure. So you cannot trust this area 100%. And then we, we will have the normal wear uh, to the failure. Okay. So we are going today to focus on this acceptance test, this area. Okay. Uh, so whenever uh, whenever we buy a new machine, a uh, critical machine, okay, we need to define, okay, the general conditions about the 
the acceptance test. Okay, these conditions can be uh, different from a contract to another, from a manufacturer to another. Okay, the, the, this uh, acceptance test, this measurement can be based on standards. Okay, let's say we are going to uh, to uh, to receive a new machine. Okay, we are going to use the ISO uh, or VDI or uh, API uh, standards that is defined for this machine to accept or, or to reject. Okay. Or maybe sometimes the, the manufacturers, okay, they have even uh, even better uh, better standards. Something uh, even the the standards can give you limits, for example, of 10. Okay, maybe the OEM said no, this machine should operate at five. So maybe you agree on this with the OEM. Okay, uh, or no, it's the OEM who offer. And then we have the third one. You can agree, okay, after maybe overhauling or repair. You can agree and take maybe a signature baseline measurement, okay, and agree with the uh, and agree with the OEM that when the machine will be uh, installed back or new or new machine, it will has it will need to have this uh, signature again, okay. So three different conditions we can mainly uh, implement between OEM and end users, okay. Uh, so defining acceptance test according to machine failure we we are going to define uh, also this acceptance test according to machine failure modes how your machine will fail okay if uh, we know that uh, the machine will have maybe uh, sh uh, high vibration due to resonance or whatever we are going to implement specific tests for that uh, if we know the forcing frequency of your machine what are the forcing uh, frequency okay i have this slide here to explain to you here we have an example of a motor with the gearbox okay and we define the source of vibration excitation okay which are the forcing frequencies okay this machine for example this motor can have problem of imbalance okay imbalance is a forcing frequency if we are not using the right tolerances of a car in your coupling you can have problem of misalignment either angular or offset if you have electrical problems on your rotors, for example, or isolation, or you have eccentricity or whatever, uh, you can have also some other forcing frequencies. When it comes now to the bearing, okay, in, for instance, for this shaft, okay, you can have problem of lubrication of your bearing. Problem of lubrication of bearing will create uh, contact metal metal in your bearing and you will generate noise. So this is what we call noise, okay? Broadband noise or here. Uh, you can have also the gear mesh, okay? Frequency, okay? Every gear has uh, uh, has teeth, okay? So we define the gear mesh frequency, number of teeth multiplied by uh, the rotational speed, okay? And this is a frequency that can be defined. So this is why we said that uh, manufacturers, if they know the machine, uh, kinematic okay they can design the machine that will be installed and change the mass the stiffness the damping the resonance according to the forcing frequency to avoid if we have for instance resonance at uh, expected forcing forcing frequency it is very dangerous okay uh, it is also recommended to perform an initial acceptance test at OEM location okay so if you have a very critical uh, pump, huge pump, and the OEM is able to perform tests in his location, it's good to agree in the contract to make a first test, acceptance test at OEM location, okay, to make sure uh, there is no error before shipping uh, the machine on site. If you find something there, uh, if you find something there that they can correct it or maybe modify once it's still on site. If we are, uh, this doesn't mean that if you validate on customer on the manufacturer side, uh, that it will be working on the end user side because end user side, okay, uh, maybe they will have different side condition, maybe the load the machine will be different, maybe the process will be different, maybe the balancing when it will be uh, let's say uh, attached to other components it will create unbalance. Uh, maybe the looseness when it's uh, installed, maybe, maybe the foundation also that are not good. Uh, so performing two type of uh, acceptance tests at 
OEM sites and also at uh, end user sites. Uh, one more thing is defining the data acquisition system. Okay, how which system are you going to use to perform the acceptance tests? Okay, uh, for instance, you can use uh, if you are having which uh, uh, if you have in, uh, for example, gas turbine, you are monitoring uh, four, six bearings. Uh, at the same time, you need a synchronous multi-channel. Okay, using just a vibration pen uh, won't, won't be uh, enough uh, to make the job. Okay, and uh, we also must be sure that the, the guy, the vibration analyst that is doing the measurement has the knowledge, okay, and uh, has maybe uh, the certification in vibration. There are some certification in vibration that gives you, let's say, the, the warranty that this guy has enough uh, level of knowledge that can perform these tests. And the last one uh, I, I wanted to discuss also is the calibration certificate. Whenever you do acceptance tests, make sure that the equipment that is used is calibrated, okay? Or maybe you can even ask for a certificate of conformity to know from where this uh, uh, this product is coming okay so it's very important to ask uh, it's even when they whenever uh, vibration analysts perform uh, vibration measurements he should give uh, at the same time the calibration certificate okay so we have some guidelines and standards okay that can be used to to define the acceptance test okay from iso to bdi to api okay and below are some examples okay uh, that can define if a vibration levels are acceptable or not. Okay, so uh, here, for instance, we have two different ones. One is mainly for pumps, okay, and the other one is for all type of machines, let's say, uh, that are uh, uh, using a roller element bearing. Uh, and we define, okay, depending on type of uh, foundation, if it's flexible, uh, using maybe silent block, or if it's rigid, direct installed. And also, if we, you, if we use the power of your machine, you can define uh, the levels. What is A, what is, a, let's say, new machine, green, uh, which is a normal operation, yellow, short-term operation, and the red is the danger. This is where uh, you, should do, uh, you should do action very fast. Okay, uh, here are a list also, the ISO, there are so many ISOs. Uh, depending on type of machine, type of industry, uh, the guideline, how to how to do the tests. Uh, so some of them uh, are for gear units, uh, some of them are for gas turbine, uh, for compressors, for machine tools. So there are so many uh, ISO standards uh, related to vibration that will show you what is the best uh, techniques to implement. Okay, some of them also are for diesel engine, reciprocating internal combustion engine. So this for diesel can be for marine industries, can be it depends where this diesel is installed. So we have uh, we have different ones. Okay. And then uh, we have also ISO standards related to uh, balancing uh, to make sure that the balancing is done the right way using the right quality of balancing, the right grade. We're going to introduce that. Okay. So uh, then when, when you decide uh, uh, the general guidelines and uh, what kind of ISO standards are you going to use the manufacturer uh, recommendation, you need uh, to start defining uh, where the measurements will be done. Uh, so you need, uh, whenever the, you have an acceptance test, you need to make sure that you define at the beginning where you are going to place your sensors and which direction, okay? So we need to ensure that the measurements reasonably represent the vibration of the bearing housing, okay? And does not uh, include uh, resonances or amplification. We are, not, we are looking to measure on top of the bearing. Uh, the location and direction is very important. Some machines can, can vibrate more in vertical direction. Other ones can measure more in horizontal direction. So the best would be to measure in uh, three direction to make sure uh, the levels are uh, are acceptable okay so here are some examples of machines okay so this picture here is from uh, the an iso standard okay this is how it shows uh, so it's defined the exact measurement location here and the direction how to measure okay so whenever uh, you have a contract of acceptance test you need to provide machine drawing 
okay, and uh, maybe picture or nomenclature of to the vibration analyst to make sure he is measuring in the position uh, that was uh, written in the contract. Okay, so we uh, we defined also the units of vibration, but to measure vibration there is no only uh, one single sensor that uh, helps you to do uh, vibration measurement. You have the non-contact displacement sensor, the velocimeter, okay, or the uh, accelerometer, okay. So also in the in the contract, let's say, you need to define the type of sensor you are going to do uh, the to measure the vibration. This also needs to be defined, okay. And from the sensor, you define also uh, the units. Are you going to measure only the velocity? Or are you going to measure the displacement too or the acceleration? Okay, so this also needs to be defined uh, like this. And then you define the, for which region. Amplitude limits recording. You need also to, uh, to measure uh, the vibration in certain condition. Okay, it's normal that if someone wants to accept a machine that is running at uh, 3000 RPM, maybe he will measure at 1000 RPM to avoid the unbalanced effect. Okay, so you need to define the operating state. What is the load? What is the RPM? The test condition, we call it. The speed, the process, the parameter, the running also is important. Uh, they must be listed. Okay, so here is the picture of uh, ISO standard from uh, for uh, mainly for a steam turbine or gas turbine. Okay, where we define uh, the rotational speed here in the x-axis, and we define the peak-to-peak -peak value uh, zone A, let's say acceptable B. Uh, B is normal condition, C is a danger, and D you should treat the machine, you should stop it. Okay, so we have different type of ISO, some of them deep, li like this, define this kind of graphs, and some of them this like, like this. Okay, so uh, we need then to define the measurement tasks, okay, which is very important. Uh, okay, we said we are going to measure the velocity, but we need to define also the task, uh, which filter are you going to use? Uh, which, which, aver uh, which averaging uh, and so on. Uh, so depending on machine and criticality, several measurements can be done, not only the overall measurement, not only the level, okay? So below, uh, I listed some, uh, uh, most of them, okay, that are used in vibration. Uh, the first one is the overall measurements, okay? So it's the amplitude, acceptable or not, okay? So we can measure the, uh, the analog signal, the, the AC vibration, and we can measure also the DC, the gap for journal bearings to compare to the clearance. So uh, we can do spectrum analysis also. We can have uh, like uh, a baseline, a spectrum baseline and compare to this baseline. Okay, uh, and this can be part of the acceptance test. If the spectrum that you expected is not the one that you measured you, you are, and you define this in the, in the contract, uh, you are allowed to say, no, I, I will reject this machine. Uh, for variable speed machines, okay, and turbo machinery, you need also to know your uh, critical speed. Uh, okay, so performing run-up, okay, you change your speed, you run your machine, you record the amplitudes, or cost down, you let your machine uh, stop, okay, and you can register, uh, collect, record some plots, we call it one of them, the uh, body plot, where you, you plot the phase and the amplitude. Nyquist is, uh, is the same, but uh, another type of graph or waterfall, where we measure different uh, different spectrums, one after the other one. And thanks to the waterfall, you are able to know which uh, which uh, frequency, which harmonic is really ex exciting the resonance, okay? Uh, for also uh, turbo machine, we use orbit measurements, okay, where uh, you can connect to some protection racks and take the orbits, okay? The orbit shows how the center of your shaft is moving inside your bearing, okay? And you can measure also what we call the shaft, rest, the shaft rest position or the shaft center line, how the center of your shaft will locate itself inside the bearing. If it's in the top of the bearing, this is not good. This is a very unstable area. It should be in the lower part of the bearing. Uh, we can also uh, perform some uh, measurements, compare the vibration to other parameters or compare other parameters between them. We call it multi-parameter plots or X and Y plots. You can, for example, uh, plot vibration and a process. So you know which condition of the process is giving the high 
vibration. You can maybe uh, plot the RPM with vibration. Uh, so all these X and Y plots uh, are very useful to, and, uh, to compare the process to the vibration. Okay. Good. So, uh, so these are the main uh, points you should focus on uh, when you perform uh, or start uh, listing uh, the actions uh, you need to perform uh, and uh, to define with between the OEM and, uh, and the end user. Okay, so uh, one of the tests uh, to make sure uh, the machine will not vibrate is to make sure that the end balance is, is good. Okay, what is the end balance here? Okay, we have just simple circle. The end balance is the, defined as position difference between the center of gravity, okay, and the geometrical center. We call it center of gravity or center of mass, okay, and uh, the geometrical center. Uh, normally, if, if a machine, if, is, if the weight, okay, is uh, is good around your uh, your shaft, you should be you should have the geometrical uh, center that that is on top of your center of gravity. But if you start having uh, some cause of unbalance, okay, like the uh, problems in the uh, the drawings, uh, something that is asymmetrical, uh, the tolerances that are too large. Uh, if you have eccentricity, you have some machining that is not done, done the right way, or you have some uh, cavities of or uh, blowholes, pollution wear, you can have you you will you are going to start having your center of mass, okay? That's starting to have more and more eccentricity uh, with your geometrical center, okay? So we when we do balancing, we try to put the center of gravity on top of the the closest possible to the center of the uh, geometrical center okay so this is unbalanced okay so unacceptable high unbalance causes damaging dynamic forces and is one of the most common cause of machine damage okay uh, so the first thing we need to make sure about rotating machine that it is balanced at the right uh, at the right tolerances or you will create uh, damages on your bearing, you will reduce the time life of your bearing, you can have cracks on your shaft, you can have cracks on your foundation, your fan blades also can be uh, destroyed. Okay, so balancing is very important. We say that more than 50% of the failures related to vibration are due to a problem of imbalance. Okay, uh, balancing so is the process of attempting to improve the mass distribution of a body that rotates on its bearing without very high centrifugal forces. Okay, so this is what we saw before. So we can perform balancing on site. Okay, you do not, you do not, you do not need to send the machine to the, uh, to the manufacturer. You can use handheld device, okay, uh, for vibration device. So this is accelerometer here. Uh, this is tachometer, okay, so or key phaser, and you have another one. So you can record the vibration, okay, with this sensor and record a phase reference of the rotational speed, and you can know where is your unbalance, where which angle you have high vibration, then you can start adding some masses until you reduce your vibration, okay? So this is on-site, but this is an example, this is different, okay? This is typical rotor that requires two plan balancing, okay? Whenever rotors start to be long, okay? If you compare the length with the diameter, you can understand there are other tests, but you can already understand if it needs to, to do it in multi-plan or maybe only in one plan, okay? And this is uh, balancing that is done in bench, okay? In, this is what we call shop balancing, okay? Uh, it is doing uh, on the manufacturer side of the overhauling company. We define then uh, different standards for vibration, okay? Some of them, it's introduction, it's, uh, it's uh, it gives you the general guideline about what is unbalanced. Uh, but the most used one, okay, that we use is the ISO 1940, okay, that, that define the balancing procedure and also the balancing rates and tolerances, the residual unbalance. Residual unbalance means how much unbalance you can leave in this machine to operate in normal condition. So, so when we perform uh, balancing, okay, uh, we have different grades. 
okay so this is the grade goes from 0 0.4 to 1 to 2.5 and so on okay and depending on type of machines you, you can see here for example you have the fans the quality class is the 6.3 okay if you go to the wheels of your car you will have the quality that is uh, in fact decreasing uh, if the number increases it means that the quality uh, is decreasing okay if you have very precision machine okay you have the quality uh, the class that is also very very low okay it means you cannot leave uh, very high residual and balance on your machine okay uh, so balancing specification needs to be also defined for acceptance test. Uh, the accept, the, you need to define what, which speed the balance, the balancing will be done. Okay, if the balancing will be done at very low, at low speed or at high speed. Normally, the balancing should be done at the operation, the operational speed. Okay, but for some reason uh, we cannot operate at this uh, rotational speed in the uh, in the shop balancing, let's say, uh, on the manufacturer side. So the speed is very important to define with the condition of balancing. What is the speed, okay? What is the vibration amplitude lim limits, okay? This is mainly what is the class you are going to use, okay? Uh, you need to know your machine and define your class. And then you need to define how you are going to perform the balancing. Are you going to use single plane? We call it static. Or you can use two plane or more we call it dynamic and balance. If machines start rotating faster, we need to do dynamic. Sometimes uh, static is enough for low speed machines. Okay. So this is a report of, uh, of balancing job. Okay. You can see here that we have a crusher, for example. Uh, before the amplitude was 32.5 millimeter per second here. Okay. And after balancing, okay, we, aim, we are at 6.7. It's still high, but this is a, let's say, a machine, very heavy machine. So we can find this kind of uh, amplitudes. And here you can, you can see here, okay, that we define the speed, okay, the RPM, so it's low speed machine. We define the mass of your rotor, okay, and we define the diameter. So this parameter needs to be defined, okay, and needs to be reported in the balancing report. And then uh, in the balancing report, it shows here at the position A, this is the initial position. Okay, so we had high vibration and we start adding some weight. Okay, so this is the different stages. We added like two kilograms, okay, at specific angle. Okay, this is what we call a uh, circular, uh, circular plot. And we added a specific angle and then we started reducing the vibration value. Okay, okay, so we, we were at 32, 31, 21 until we reached 6.7. So this balancing uh, should be part of this balancing report. How I show it should be, should be part of the acceptance test. Okay, should be provided. Okay, second one I would like to discuss is the resonance. Okay, the resonance is the I would say the most dangerous uh, vibration uh, amplitudes you can find. Okay, when when to test the, uh, resonance. Resonance testing should be performed whenever vibration levels, okay, cannot be explained completely by forcing frequencies. Okay, sometimes you can have mini harmonics and so on, but this is not justifying these very high levels, okay? So we can think then about resonance, okay? Uh, resonance can happen for new machines, okay? So we don't know yet the mode shape of the machine, the critical speed. Uh, we can do startups and cause down to know the, the resonance, and we can observe uh, the resonance during startups and cause down. Or resonance, the most simple way is when you drive your car. You are running at 80 km per hour, your car is, is not vibrating, you start reaching 120, your car starts vibrating. This is the resonance. And when you move to 140, your car is not uh, vibrating anymore. Uh, so uh, we call the critical speed or the resonance frequency this 120 kilometer, and this is what we should avoid. We should not operate at this uh, at this speed, or we should uh, do some uh, reworking, uh, change in your machines, change in the stiffness, the damping, the mass uh, to be allowed to operate at this uh, at this uh, this speed. Okay, uh, variable load machines also can create 
if we change the load uh, we can change the stiffness and we can create resonance okay so this is a example of a run up and cost down to to know the that can be performed for acceptance test okay you can you can ask uh, the the manufacturer tell him uh, for some production reason process reason i need to operate between uh, safety between uh, 1000 rpm okay up to uh, 2600 rpm okay uh, so we need to perform this run up so here we are recording the amplitudes and we are recording the speed okay so here we, you can see that at this speed 800 rpm around 800 rpm okay here okay we have high vibration starting okay so this area we should not operate okay we should avoid rotating at this area okay so we record what we call the amplitude and we record also what we call the phase okay so the phase shows uh, how your machines change movement okay how the mode shape can change how the heavy spot can be cannot be in the high spot this is other type of discussion uh, but this test is very important for machines that needs to operate at different speed so whenever you have a variable speed machine this is part of the acceptance test you should perform okay uh, so i introduced before the body plot okay so this is the this is a body plot okay body plot means we are recording amplitude and phase uh, here again body plot okay we can have body plot we can track okay the unbalance unbalance occur at the first uh, order okay the first at the rotational speed so we can record the amplitudes only of the rotational speed okay and and record also the phase and see for instance here if you can see we are recording here the uh, the amp the amplitude here okay you see your speed okay so here you are reaching okay your resonance frequency you should not operate and you should not do balancing because if you do balancing at the reson at the resonance frequency you can destroy your machine okay if you put your mass in in the not in the in an angle which is not good it will amplify uh, very uh, heavily the the vibration okay so this is what we call the body plot body plot where you have the amplitude and you have your face okay your face we said that there is a 180 degree phase shift when you pass over the resonance okay so you see whenever we have resonance we have a phase shift okay so resonance i, I said that uh, it is related mainly to to the speed okay and it can also be related to the load uh, here we have another example of the influence of the operating states of the machine vibration behave, behavior can be dependent on the operating st state okay if we change the to the power the torque the pressure the flow this can have an incidence on the on the resonance frequency here we have an example here where we have the rpm here and we are uh, over uh, over the time okay so this is days we see that the machine was operating at this rpm sometimes here what we can see is whenever the machine starts okay by uh, rotating higher than 1000 uh, 150 let's say okay this this line okay vibration in this area starts to be high okay so we can understand that we have high vibration in this uh, in this region due to uh, change in the speed in the rotational speed okay so resonance is one of the uh, most important tests to do for a variable speed machine and uh, i recommend also to 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 use the balancing okay to make sure you are using the iso standards uh, for that there are different tests we can uh, we can discuss okay later on in other webinar hope so to see you there uh, so thank you thank you for uh, for uh, for being here for this webinar and uh, feel free to to ask me any question uh, if there are already some question uh, in the chat uh, you can share it with me here you can find my contact details okay in case if you have any question and uh, yeah let me know if you have some question. Thank you. Bo uh, well, thank you very much for the great presentation. It was really smooth and informative.
my question to the audience. If you have a few, uh, some questions, you can drop it in the question box. Uh, we will have to go over a few more minutes uh, over our planned time to answer the questions. I can see we have a few questions in the inbox. Are you ready, Omar? Yeah, go ahead. So, what kind of machine potential failures can we avoid thanks to vibration analysis? Yeah, th th this is a, let's say this is basic question. Uh, I would say uh, vibration analysis, as I said during the presentation, can solve many issues from imbalance, misalignment, cavitation, uh, bearing, uh, bearing problems, uh, and should be part of any any condition. Uh, any reliability program is very important. So we can detect all type of main type of defects. Thank you. Uh, we take one more question. Uh, what is the best general conditions to adapt with the manufacturers? Uh, yeah, you mean for the general condition? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually, uh, usually if the manufacturer has his own uh, his own uh, uh, recommendation and limits. It's good to to use the manufacturer ones, uh, but the the minimum required should be the ISO. So if the manufacturer provides uh, better limits, okay, lower limits than the ISO, should be fine to use the manufacturer. But if the manufacturer uh, gives higher value than the limits, uh, this is not the case. So I recommend to use the manufacturer in case the the limits are lower. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, we have got a few more questions and, and also some nice feedback. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, we cannot uh, take more time. So uh, if your question hasn't been answered yet, you can reach out to Omar by email uh, or to ProofTechnique at uh, ptme at prooftechnique.com email. Uh, there are also some questions related to proof technique entities so uh, you can reach out to us through ptme uh, email address and we can redirect you to the correct uh, proof uh, fluke entity so Omar, thank you very much again for the amazing presentation and for sharing your insights and expertise today i can tell that we will be looking forward to the part two for sure so um, yes. thank you everyone for joining. I uh, just have a quick request to our attendees. When you exit the GoToWebinar, there will be a window that pops up with very short 30 second survey. We would really appreciate your feedback on today's session. Thank you once again for joining today. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>